fishing his fishing his door places. <laughs> Water is now hard. It's ice fishing season. The place that I want to highlight now is really considered by many the queen of American lakes, Lake George. Every year my buddies and I will make a couple of trips up to Lake George. Learned about it from another buddy years ago. It's unreal. It's an addictive, addictively beautiful and addictively good for fishing lake. Isaac jokes. Discovered it, referred to it as the Saint Sacrama, the Lake of the Blessed Sacrament. There's so many different things we can do at Lake George, whether we're talking about early stuff or French and Indian War or even Revolution War. What I'm going to focus on in this episode is going to be some of the actions of 1757. Beyond Sabbath Day Point. Weather looks interesting. High winds today. Lake George is a wind tunnel. I'm a little worried. But we'll be able to find somewhere we can tuck in and get out of it. It's a west wind today, which means the big north south mountain ranges will provide some degree of shelter. Probably be some fish, we'll be fishing some different areas today as a result. But I'm meeting Price and Beetroot up here. And uh, we're being joined by G Money and family, Gary Myers, along with Laker La Chapelle, who will come late. Well, it uh, looks like it could be a good trip. Oh, well, what do you mean, could be? It's Lake George in early May. You can't lose. This lake, as we were saying, to answer a question from Beetroot, is in fact a road. While there aren't a lot of French up there in Canada, Canada starts where you see that round top mountain down there in the middle of the lake. That's well, just to the left of that, actually. That's Tongue Mountain. And that was a French observation post for four years of the French and Indian War. That's, that's New France right there. Meanwhile, right here, in 1756, the English completed Fort William Henry. So here, using the unbelievable tool known as Google Earth that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, I'm showing you the importance of the lakes region. I'm talking about Lake George and Lake Champlain, situated on the border of New England and New York. These lakes, coupled with the Hudson River, provide a natural invasion route either from New York City in the south toward the French-controlled St. Lawrence River Valley or vice versa from Quebec on down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in on Quebec. And you can see that Quebec on its great promontory sticking out like a giant nose into the St. Lawrence River is the heart of French Canada. If we move southwest down the St. Lawrence and by Trois Rivières toward Montreal, we come to the Richelieu River. If you follow the Richelieu River down and the Amerindians have developed this route by St. John, we come to Lake Champlain. Down Lake Champlain we go. So we come to the great French bastion of Fort St. Frederick located right next to the last bridge into Vermont. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. Continuing on down though, we come to Fort Carillon, where the French had built another new fort, guarding the critical portage between Lake George on this side and Lake Champlain over here, up the La Chute River. So, from Carillon, the French could easily portage down and into Lake George, and then from Lake George, 
they could slide on down relatively quickly and hit the Hudson River Valley were it not for these three forts. Fort William Henry, Fort Dan, and Fort Edward on the Hudson. That triangle of forts right there, they had been constructed at the beginning of the last French and Indian War under the leadership of Governor Shirley of Massachusetts and then later on Sir William Johnson who became famous during this period for his work with the Iroquois, well then Asana Indians and of course with the colonial militia. And the fort that we're going to focus on here is going to be Fort William Henry which is at the southern end of Lake George and is going to be the center of the action 1756 and 1757. So there's our natural invasion route between Quebec and New York. And that invasion route could allow the French to cut New England off from the rest of the English colonies and easily penetrate New England. Some really interesting stuff that went on while this was being built. In 1750, <laughs> 55, 56. The foundations were laid, the berms were put up, uh, much of the walls were prepared as we see them now. Of course, this is a re reconstruction. But the French, coming down the lake on snowshoes, on the icy lake in January of 1756, catch the English napping. Now, the English, in order to build this fort, had a series of barns and bateaus and workhouses and, and mills, and the French coming down on ice, catch them by surprise and burn all their outbuildings, including all their ships. And the English were able to seek shelter in the uncompleted fort, but they lost all their outbuildings and it was a tough winter for them. By 1756 fall, this fort is finished and this, this fort will support a, what we would call a regiment of British soldiers uh, under the command of Colonel Monroe, a Scotsman. And in the summer of that year, the French General Marquis de Montcalm will move south from the freshly built Fort Carleon, Ticonderoga to us, and he will assault this fort. And he'll do so by using many bateaux and canoes to ferry his army down the lake with Amer Indians of all kinds of western tribes Huron and Ottawa, Ojibwe, Cree coming down the west shore of Lake George by an Indian path are hundreds of western Indians from various tribes coming directly down the lake and landing on the point just over here to our left will be Montcalm's army. And what they will do is they will occupy the land where we can see Lake George Village today and they'll build a series of entrenchments. 18th century warfare was all about siege warfare. So what they would do is they would build lines of contravallation they called them, which surround a strong point and then slowly but surely they would try to close in bringing the lines closer and closer bringing the guns closer and closer and when they got their heavy mortars in I believe it was early August it was all over for Fort William Henry which we can see is a log fort and a log fort is what would typically be built quickly because it would provide cover for infantry ha, but it wouldn't be very good against an artillery armed army and that's the kind of army that Montcalm had brought with him. An army with mortars which are a siege weapon and field pieces. These logs are going to do nothing. The kind of fort you'd want to hold back such an army would be a earthen walled fort like we see up at Fort Ticonderoga or up at Crown Point. So right here we're, we're looking at a fort that's been rebuilt and provides us with a pretty good understanding of what it would have looked like at the time, but a great disaster for British forces 
in the French and Indian War. Sadly, just a few miles away, there was another British regiment commanded by General Webb, who refused to come to the aid of Monroe, allowing the Marquis de Montcalm to win a victory. He burned the fort and then brought the army back up to Curleon, which would lead to another big action in 1758, but that's not something we want to talk about right now. Got some action here. Beetroot and Officer Promptitude Price have hooked up. Nothing huge. But they got him. Officer Beetroot referred to you as Impromptitude Price the other day. I'll have you know. <laughs> I started typing it. It came up Impromptitude? <laughs> I love autocorrect. Well, I got a, what I got going on here is like this new technique. I'm putting on a fly. So I just run the line through the fly, like so. They do that for uh, the salt water guys off the jetties. Yeah, That's so now huge. from here, I have. Oh, oh beetroot! Missed another one. Missed another one. 63? 60, yeah, 60. We gotta hope they're perch. Okay, so here. Now, oh, oh, he's on! That one's on. He's on! Got Talbot hooks up. <laughs> the beetroot. And it's another small one. Yep, but you know what? A fish is a fish. The key is finding them. Because if we find them today, and they're small, they could be big ones tomorrow. And we've had that happen before, remember? You're chasing the pink panther. Yep, the panther pink. I love it. No, they're freaking out. We just dragged them out of their nice little warm spot down there. So when you see Gary, is going to go any luck? Oh, yeah, we did like probably between the th three of us, 50. <laughs> well, I'm not helping right now. I got to start helping. Well, Get just, uh... I think it was the darker color I was using. At the bubble. He's got a better fish, but he's not saying it's a bragger yet. Something though. Blade bait. Beetroot is the master of the blade. He's going to do a how to tomorrow on the blade. Oh, missed one. As you can see, they're on the jerk baits. Beat root. Me. I expect we're going to catch some fish. There we go. I'm on again, too. Bobble. Let's see if this is a large bob. It is. We've got large mouth cones. <laughs> Not a big one, but this is a small large mouth. Look at that. It's a tiny guy. And they're definitely keying on smelt because we're we're seeing them kicking up dead smelt. We caught smallmouths to the left of the incoming stream, and here we're getting largemouth. What is that all about? 
we found a largemouth hole, a school. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down, I'm going down to them. And these guys are using the blade, so I'm going to throw the jig and spoon with the improved feather teaser. Officer Beetroot, retired law officer. Nope, retired, retired health, mental health doctor. <laughs> Look at that. Dude, it wasn't even in his lip. It was just, it's like just on the very tip of his lip. Yeah, I felt like as I was jigging, so uh, it kind of went up. I think there's a hump right here. And you felt it go up? And, uh, and it was boom. Yeah, you know, that's the thing about that blade bait is when you use it really subtly like you're doing, it it really, I mean, you're talking about a lure that is, I don't, I, you want to talk about a misunderstood lure. Uh-oh, price on. I was supporting another large mouse. No, it's a smallmouth. He breaks the streak, price you're out of the boat. You got to wait for Laker. You got to go stand on one of those rock shoals until Laker gets here. He ruined everything. We had like six or five large mouths. That's a nice smallmouth, though, Tom. On the, on the, the blade, another blade bait bass. It's on the Biden blade. <laughs> the Biden got blade. The <laughs> the Biden blades are like really expensive. Nice. I got I got it. The Biden blade bait. Oh, I just missed one. It's a real subtle presentation that they're using with the blade. Now, Tom is letting the blade down right now, right? And once you get it down there, you're really not moving that pole tip much at all. Oh, Big Root! He's got a good one. We got, uh, Big Root's got a laker here. I'm gonna have to get the net, or Tommy's gonna get the net. I don't think he's huge. No. Where's the tape? Yeah. So, we got a laker on here. Oh, there he is. You ready? Yeah. He's a, he's a game fish right there. That guy's, he's alive. We got to let him come into the net. Let him come up. Wait a minute. Let him come up. Just be slow with it. Lift him slow. Lift him slow. Lift him slow. Because you can't plunge it. Right there. Right there. Oh yeah! That's I don't think that's too small. Huh? Measure that. I think that's going to be 23, 24. I think it's got to be 23. I thought it was 24. No, I think it's 23, but we can look it up. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Oh, you have a lot of them. I was just telling you if you wanted to use one of these. He's all rolling in the line. Yeah, measure that guy just to check. Down over there. See right behind you, right where the net is. Time, you move the net. That was nice, Scott. Nice job. Nice job. And he was in a. Oh, uh, uh, way bigger than that. Yeah, he was. Uh, he hit it close. So yeah, I took it out of the net. So you can see Officer Beetroot's using a a jerk bait. Notice how he's got it hooked up by the tail. No, I don't. Uh, notice uh, how he's got. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's got his own unique way of using the jerk bait. He, he's got the squiggle on the tail, so it gives it its own unique. <laughs> I would retie that, Scott, seriously, because that was that was kind of a good fight. He was he was game. He was game. That was a game lake trout. 
<laughs> I'm like, I gotta get him. <laughs> See, everybody, I'm funny. You know I'm funny. <laughs> Action. Doesn't feel like a small fish. Oh, it's a nice small mouth. And you know what he hit? He hit. <laughs> Oh, he got off at the boat. He hit the, the fly. He was on the fly. You know how I got the fly up top? He hit it hard, too. It was like a nice bash. There we go. Another one. Same general area. Did he hit the fly? Whoa! Whoa! Oh, this one hit the spoon. This was a spoon fish. Oh! No, he's still on. I hate that, then I gotta land him. Oh no! He's got both hooks in him. Not anymore, he doesn't. Oh no. There's a nice guy. <laughs> we keep him out of my, gotta keep him out of here. Beetroot, on! With the subtle, the subtle blade. I don't know what's a head shaker. No, it's a big smallmouth. Probably one you just caught. Oh, that's a nice smallmouth beetroot. Oh, yeah. See, beetroot's working the blade. Purple, purple people? Yeah. He doesn't care. He's a he's a blade man now. He's con he's converted over. He's nothing but blade, all blade all the time. Oh yeah, look at that hog, Scott. Point, show that to the camera, Scott. Po hold your hand out here, Scott. It beat root selfishness. There it is. Look at that. Look at that hog. Ready? <laughs> Want to see how big it actually is? How big? Yes, like a bass guy. Good job. He didn't even. He didn't even let Tom get a picture. Oh, you had to. If you were a straight beat route, you'd be one. You'd be your street would be named one way. On the drop. He can do this anywhere. He, he's got the. He's got the blade. He's doing a how-to on the blade here. Oh, he gets off right there. He just, you, he just makes it happen. He doesn't, no rhyme or reason, he just makes it happen. That's him. Yeah, he must have been hammering at a certain...
Oh, that is so sick. He's got three this in, technique in, down. In, like, I'm going to try it. You know, but, but I can't do what beetroot does. Look at that. Nice He's got another one. No, they're all the same size. Dude. They're all like, it's the beetroot. Yeah, there's nothing. Like, like. Yeah. <laughs> no. Now, what? What one are you hooking it through? Like, so are you hooking it through the top no, one, no, middle can't. one? I can't even he's, tell that. he's not going to tell us. That's so the kind I, of guy he is. I actually did, and it's the front one. He's going through the front one. No, it's the front one. It's he's, he's totally lying to us. You know, he wouldn't tell us if he, if he, if he could. He wouldn't tell us.